Hey math students, how you doing? Today let's, uh, uh, let's look at geometric series. And uh, if you remember, a series is when you add up a bunch of terms, whereas a sequence is just that, uh, uh, that string of numbers. So uh, behind me here, I have a geometric series. Let, let, let's actually verify that this is actually geometric. If this is a geometric series, that means that I would multiply six times something, r, to get four. I would multiply four times r to get eight-thirds. Multiply eight-thirds times r to get sixteen-ninths. So I guess what we should do is divide four by six to find out what r is, and four divided by six is two-thirds. So times two-thirds gets me four. Four times two-thirds is eight-thirds. That's true. Eight-thirds times two-thirds is sixteen-ninths, and yes, indeedy, this is a geometric series. So if I want to find the first 10 terms, what do I do? Well, one thing I could do is just find those numbers, add them up. That's the, that's the kind of crude way to do it. Let's find a more elegant way to do that though. So let's say, uh, let's say S10 is uh, my, uh, uh, my, my series here. It's going to be 6 plus 4 plus 8 thirds plus 16 ninths, plus all the way up to uh, the last term in this series would be, it would be A10, and A10 would be 6 times 2 thirds to the ninth power. Okay? That's what our series looks like. Okay? And uh, here's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to say, okay, well, let me... Uh, let me multiply this times two-thirds. Two-thirds times S10. So that means I'm going to multiply each one of these terms inside of here by two-thirds. What's two-thirds of six? It's four. What's two-thirds of four? It's uh, eight-thirds. What's two-thirds of eight-thirds? It's um, sixteen-ninths plus and so on uh, plus uh, 6 times 2 thirds to the ninth plus 6 times 2 thirds to the tenth. Okay? Because if I multiply this times 2 thirds, I get 6 times 2 thirds to the tenth. All right? Second part of this trick is let's subtract this minus this. So this minus this whole thing. All right, well, S10 minus two-thirds S10 is just going to get us one-third times S10. And when we subtract this top line minus this bottom line, notice that I'm going to have four minus four, and eight-thirds minus eight-thirds, and sixteen-ninths minus sixteen-ninths, and so there's, there's going to be a whole lot of zeros there. As a matter of fact, everything is going to have a little another little term down here to, fact, to cancel it out, except for the first one, 6, and the very last one. And since I'm subtracting this, this is going to be minus 6 times 2 thirds to the tenth. Hmm. Okay. So now if I just uh, multiply both sides times 3, I can figure out what S10 is. It's going to be 18, and let me just factor this out, times 1 minus two-thirds to the tenth power. And uh, what does that come out to be? Uh, according to my notes, that comes out to be approximately 17.688. All right. Well, I believe this is a little more elegant than uh, just, multi just uh, adding up uh, ten numbers and cranking out that way, especially because if you think about it, I could find the sum of the first 20 terms just as easily. All I would have to do is just change this exponent to a 20 instead of a 10, and it's going to find me that sum. So actually, this is a much better way to do it. Um, so let's, uh, let's generalize a little bit what we just did. Let's, uh, I'm going to say, uh, instead of S10, I'm going to say, if I want to find Sn, which is the sum as k goes from 1 to n of 
a k and remember this is a geometric uh, series which means this is the sum as k goes from 1 to n of a1 times r to the uh, k to the yeah k minus 1 all right that's how we define each term of a geometric sequence so a geometric series is going to be the sum of all those terms from 1 to n Okay, so that means Sn is A1 plus A1 times R plus A1 times R squared plus on and on to A1 times R to the N minus 1. And remember what we did last time? We said, I'm going to multiply this times R. So R times Sn will be A1R, multiplying that plus a1r squared plus a1r cubed plus up to a1r to the n. Then remember what we did? We said, I'm going to subtract this. So subtract this whole thing. And over here I get sn times 1 minus r. And over here, if you remember, these things take care of each other. These things take care of each other. Everything is going to cancel out except for this term and this term. So we end up with a1 minus a1 times r to the nth power. Dividing both sides by 1 minus r and factoring out that a1, it gets us that sn is a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And that, my friends, is a nice little uh, formula that's going to come in handy in the future. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that up here. So this turns out to be a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, uh, let's use this. Uh, let's say we have um, 24 plus 18 plus 13.5 plus 10.125 plus, okay, and I want the first hmm, 20 terms. Okay, we can do this because this is A1 is 24 and R is... Uh, 18 over 24 is 3 fourths, 13.5 over 18 is 3 fourths, 10.125 over 13.5 is 3 fourths, so R is 3 fourths. Okay, um, and uh, so that means I have the sum as K goes from 1 to 20 of 24 times uh, 3 fourths to the k minus 1 power, and that is 24 times 1 minus 3 fourths to the 20th over 1 minus 3 fourths. All right, 1 minus 3 fourths, that's just a fourth, and dividing by 1 fourth is like multiplying times 4. So 24 times 4, that's a 96 times 1 minus three-fourths to the twentieth power. And that comes out to about 95.7. I'm going to say about, so I'm going to make a little squiggly equal sign there. All right. So uh, again, that came in very handy. That was way easier than uh, adding up. Well, first off, calculating what those 20 terms would be and then adding them all up. Uh, if I were doing that, I'd probably use a spreadsheet. Okay, so... Um, well, here's my next question. Uh, what if uh, what if I wanted to add up all of these terms? Okay, not just the first twenty, but what if I wanted to add up every single one of them? First off, can I? And the answer is yes, I can. And there's a reason why I can. Uh, So what I want to do is, 
I want to add, as k goes from 1 to infinity, 24 times 3 fourths to the k minus 1 power. Okay? Uh, so, how do I do that? Well, th this is how I do it. Think of a finite sum. This is an infinite sum we're talking about. So think of a finite sum, but where n is just really, really big. Okay? So, in other words, I'm going to imagine, I'm going to say the limit as n goes to infinity. So n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. k is going from 1 to n of 24 times 3 fourths to the k minus 1 power. Okay? Now, I know what that is. That's going to be uh, 24 times 1 minus 3 fourths to the n over 1 minus 3 fourths. And I even know what that is. I know what 1 minus 3 fourths is. It's a fourth. So this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of 96 times 1 minus 3 fourths to the n power. So. As n gets really huge, like a million, what is three fourths to the millionth power? Little, little bitty, okay? Because every time I multiply three fourths by itself, another time, another time, another time, it's three fourths as big. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So basically, this thing here is turning into something insignificantly small. So, in other words, I can just say, it's basically zero now. So this turns out to be 96. If I add up every single term, it turns out to be 96. So let's generalize here. Let's say, what did we just do? We just said that the limit, well, we just said that the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of a k, assuming this is a, a, a uh, a geometric sequence or a series. So that's going to be the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of a1 times r to the k minus 1, that that equals a1 times 1 over 1 minus r. In other words, a1 over 1 minus r. If, and this is a big ol' if here, if that, if the absolute value of r is less than 1. Because remember, we had to say 3 fourths is a little number. And every time you multiply times 3 fourths, your product gets smaller and smaller and smaller. r has to be a little number. And by little, we mean it's between negative 1 and 1. Okay? Or in other words, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. If r is 1, it we don't get an answer, okay? Uh, if r is 1, uh, the, the word that we use is it diverges. The, the series diverges, and you don't get a finite answer. If r is less than 1, then the series converges, and you get a finite answer. Let's do another one. Let's say... Uh, let's say we're going to do... Uh, 20 minus 10 plus 5 minus 2.5 plus 1.25 minus uh, 0.625, okay? So in other words, A1 is 20, and R is going to be negative 1 half. And I want to know what's the sum of the first 12 terms, okay? So I want k goes from 1 to 12 of 20 times negative 1 half to the k minus 1 power. Okay? Just, we'll just plug it in. So it's going to be 20 times 1 minus negative 1 half to the 12th over 1 minus negative 1 half. Got to be careful with our pluses and minuses here. So, uh... What does that get us? This gets us 20 times 1 minus negative 1 half to the 12th power. I believe that turns out to be 
4,095 over 4,096. And then we're dividing by 1 minus negative 1 half, which is 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying times 2 thirds. And what does that get us? That gets us about 13.3301. Okay, that was relatively painless. Now the next question is, what if we add all of them? Not just the first 12, but all of them. Okay, so two way, there's two pieces to answering to this. The first piece is, can we do it? R is negative one half. Yes, we can, okay? Because the absolute value of R is less than one. So yes, it can be done. Now, what's it gonna be? Uh, it's gonna be the exact same thing that we have here, except this, instead of being minus negative one half to the 12th, is just gonna be one. So this piece of it goes away and you get 20 times two thirds, which is 13 and two thirds. Oops, sorry, 13 and one third. 13.3333333. So we were almost there with our first 12 terms, but uh, now we're all the way there. Uh, let's do two more examples. Okay, first example is, I wanna know what is the sum uh, as n goes from one to infinity of one third to the nth power. What is that? Okay, so here's what I recommend when you get something like this. Start writing out the first couple of terms. Okay, so this is gonna be one third plus one ninth plus one twenty seventh plus et cetera. Okay, now figure out what's A1 and what's R. In this case, both A1 and R are one third. So this is gonna be, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna say this is going from k, k equals one to infinity of one third times one third to the k minus one. The only reason I'm doing this is that I wanna put it in terms that I'm familiar with. I wanna write it out like it's a geometric series. And now I know what to do because this is gonna be a1 over 1 minus r. So it's going to be 1 third over 1 minus 1 third. Well, that's 1 third over 2 thirds, and that's just a half. What do you know? If I take all the powers of 1 third and I add them up together, I get 1 half. Cool. Last example. Last example is... Let's take the sum as n goes from zero to 30 of four times seven eighths to the n power. Okay, again, be careful here. Write out the first couple of terms. Uh, so this is gonna be four times seven eighths to the zero, that's four, plus four times seven eighths, that's uh, 3.5 or seven over two plus seven halves times seven eighths, that's plus uh, 49 over, one six, over 16 plus et cetera, okay? How many terms do we have? We're going from n equals zero, not one, but zero up to 30, and that's 31 terms. So I'm gonna rewrite this and I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna say k is gonna go from one to 31 of a1 is four, and r is uh, 7 eighths to the k minus one power. Now I'm writing it in a way that I'm more familiar with and now I can say, okay, yeah, I know what this is. This is gonna be four times one minus 7 eighths to the 31 over one minus 7 eighths. One minus 7 eighths is 1 eighth and dividing by 1 eighth is like multiplying times eight and so this gets me 32 times one uh, minus seven eighths to the 31 power. And that is, what is that? That is approximately 31.49, okay? All right, so what do I want you to come away with here? I want you to come away with uh, basically 
two different formulas. Okay? And those two formulas are these formulas here. Okay? Uh, that uh, the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series uh, gets you that particular uh, uh, formula. And the sum of all the terms of an infinite geometric series gets you that particular formula, but only if r is between negative 1 and 1. Otherwise, it's going to diverge. It's not going to get you a finite answer at all. Okay? All right. Till the next video. Bye-bye.